Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, this is a good start because the two of them are smiling <laughs> and you would be so surprised how often that doesn't happen <laughs> but they're actually happy so this is this is great very welcome guys to this great day of joy for Christopher and Monica. Uh, at last the day has come we have waited a long time, uh, Theodosius and Linda and Julie and Pat have waited a long time to get rid of you, so they're, really, they're even happier than you are, so we are, you're all very welcome. And we ask, we are all joined with you in prayer, we will ask the Lord to pour out his abundant grace upon you today and for the rest of your lives. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Monica and Chris. On this day, they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection and our friendship, with our prayers as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word of God who speaks to us today. Then with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father, through Christ our Lord, for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them one. Just before we begin, I forgot about this little tradition of the candles. So at this point in time, you are two, but you will become one. So maybe just to signify that you are two, I will ask you to light each of you come forward and light the outside candles. This is going to be tricky for Monica. 
the first trial. Dodgy candles. <laughs> you get this? And so we pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these your servants, Chris and Monica, that coming together before your altar, they may be conformed in love to, for one another through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I'll ask you all to be seated. And I'll ask uh, Kimberly to come forward for the first reading. supposed to meet the wrong people before we meet the right one. So when they finally arrive, we are truly grateful for the gift we have been given. Maybe it's true that we don't know what we have lost until we lose it, but it's also true that we don't know what we're missing until it arrives. Maybe the happiest of people don't have the best of everything, but make the best of everything that comes their way. Maybe the best kind of love is the kind where you can sit on the sofa together, not saying a word, and walk away feeling like it was the best conversation you ever had. Maybe once in a lifetime, you find someone who not only touches your heart, but also your soul. Someone who loves you for who you are and not what you could be. Maybe the art of true love is not about finding the perfect person, but about seeing an imperfect person perfectly. A reading from the letter of St. Paul's to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let the gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, be present, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learnt or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. God is love. 
So let us love one another as God has loved us. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said, Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. There were six stone jars of water standing there, meant for the ablutions that were customary among the Jews. Each could hold 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this, the steward tasted the water, and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said, people generally serve the best wine first and keep the cheaper sort till the guests have had plenty to drink, but you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first sign of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated now, just for a few minutes. So again, Monica and Chris, congratulations. Um, it's a privilege for all of us to be here, to be invited to this day. A select crowd, a select. So we have Jesus being invited to the wedding feast and his mother and probably a select crowd, but then the, his disciples decided they would tag along and they drank all the wine. So it was a bit of a, an embarrassment. Um, and luckily Jesus was there and he performed a miracle. Today for you is just like the wine that flowed there. Today your wine is flowing, your joy is flowing. And that's evident just looking at you and looking at your family around you. The, w the wine is fresh and wine is new and it's overflowing. But I would say, and you can ask your parents, I'm sure you know, that the wine sometimes runs out. Joy sometimes gets low. And who will you need there with you? Only Jesus. You know, he, he is with you in the midst today and he will be with you um, when the wine runs out and you need to turn to him. You really need to turn to him that Today, your, your marriage is being blessed by God. You are being united within God and in Christ. And he is going to pour out his blessing upon you every day of your life. The only barrier to that immense and abundance of grace is you, each of you. You have to open yourself up to it. You have to, like Mary or like the steward, turn to Jesus when you need him. And you will need him uh, in everything. Um, I was just thinking about your names uh, and how, you know, maybe that, that maybe uh, reading that Kimberly read there, maybe um, we meet the wrong people before we meet the right and all of that. Maybe your names say something about you and your life together. So Christopher, I know what Christopher means is Christ's bearer someone who bears Christ. And that's so that you will both be one from today on, so you both will have to bear Christ to each other. 
Christ. That's how he bore himself to us on the cross. And you will have to do that for, for each other from this day forward. Pouring out your life for each other. Sacrificing yourselves for each other before, before Chris, Monica, before Monica, Chris. Uh, that's, that's what you are, the promise you are making today by your, your mercy, by your forgiveness, by your understanding, by your compromise, by your very bodies, you are bearing each other. Um, so that's your first. Monica, Monica, I don't know what Monica means. Do you? No. I know Monica was the mother of St. Augustine. Um, and she, so St. Augustine, as we know, was a, lived a, a dodgy life before he became a priest. And his mother prayed for him for 30 or 40 years. So she was persevering in prayer. Both of you will have to be persevering in prayer for each other. You will have to pray a lot for Chris, Monica. I just have that feel. <laughs> persevering in prayer. So bringing each other to, to Jesus. So we bury Jesus to each other, but also bringing each other to Jesus. Um, and it's very easy to criticize and point out when you begin to live with each other for a longer and longer time, um, you will begin to see the flaws and um, it's easy to criticize, but you need just to bring each other to Jesus and ask him to pour out grace into each other's lives. Um, and that's basically it. Just turn to Jesus in everything and he will supply the fresh new wine it says at the end of the gospel, this was the first sign given by Jesus. The first sign is the joy you experience today. The ongoing signs will be the joy that you will experience in the highs and lows for the rest of your life um, as you turn to Jesus in every need. So now we will, we will get on with the marriage. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of God's church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated in holy baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and, and still heartedly. I have. Chris, are you resolved to take Monica to be your wife, to love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, and forsaking all others to be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I am. Monica, are you resolved to take Chris to be your husband to love him, comfort, honor, and protect him, and forsaking all others to be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I am. And Chris and Monica, are you both prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. I do solemnly declare that I know of no lawful impediment that I know of no unlawful impediment that I, Chris Kelly, that I Christopher Kelly may not be joined in matrimony to that I may not be joined in matrimony to Monica Kiriak. I do solemnly declare I do solemnly declare that I know of no lawful impediment that I know of no lawful impediment 
by Monica Kiriakou. May not be joined in matrimony to Christopher Kelly. May not be joined in matrimony to Christopher Kelly. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Christopher Kelly, thank you, Monica Kiriakou, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. I, Monica Kiriakou, take you, Christopher Kelly, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent that you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Bless, O Lord, these rings which we bless in your name, so that those who wear them may remain faithful to each other and abide in peace and in your will and live always in mutual charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you take Monica's ring there. Monica. Monica. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. My body. Okay. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Christopher. Christopher. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. That's it. Congratulations. Maybe a kiss would be appropriate, and we'll give them a round of applause, everyone. Well done, guys. So do you want to... Do we need another taper? Where's the other one? No. Okay. Well, I thought they joined these two. No, anyway. <laughs> Lit very well. It's a good sign. <laughs> well done. Okay, you can see you can see the jet.
Emily, I call forward Emily, Tracy, Ethan, and Julia for the bidding prayers. Now let us humbly invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, and in his kindness may he bless them with his favor forever and ever. We pray for Monica and Chris that their life together will be filled with happiness and love, that they may always be true friends to each other, that together they will face the challenges of life. May their home be one filled with love. Bless them on their journey through life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember today with a special love friends and family members who have touched our lives and are sadly no longer with us. May they remain in our thoughts and prayers. Lord, bless them and keep them in your care until one day we are re reunited with them in the joys of our eternal home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all here present that God may give you peace in your hearts for today, hope in your hearts for tomorrow, and love in your hearts forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we are blessed today to be gathered together for a happy occasion. Let us give thanks for our own blessings, for the gifts of life and health, which we so often take for granted, and pray for all those who are suffering due to illness, loneliness, injustice, or poverty at this time. We also remember those who care for them, that God will give them the hope and inner strength they need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was the one who interceded for the couple at the wedding feast of Cana. And so now we ask her to intercede for Chris and Monica now and for every day of their married life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now let us humbly invoke God's blessing upon Monica and Chris, that in his kindness he may favor them with his help, those whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing. And when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and thought that what you are pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant, you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ in his church. O God, by whom is joined to man, woman is joined to man, and the companionship they have in the beginning is endowed with one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour out your love into their hearts that they may be, remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Monica, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises were sung in the scripture. May her husband, Chris, entrust his heart to her 
so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir in the life of grace, he may show her due honour and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in flesh. May they be blameless in all that they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all ages. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children, ch children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, may they come to the life of blessed peace in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us stand now and at the Saviour's command, pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. And let us pray. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who you are, are united in the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your head for God's blessing. May the God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart and mind in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and the needy may have known your kindness, may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling place of heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Now we're having the signing. Yeah, we'll sign the... Three, four.